Welcome back to the Big So Along. I'm so excited to be back. I had the most stressful, long week. Dealing with technology is not my thing at all. So I'm really glad that that is finished and I'm back. Um, I do still have a few things to figure out. Oh, and speaking of which, I, I do have a new computer, um, but I also have new editing equipment or editing software. See, that's how good I am at it. I don't even know what it's called. Um, editing software, and I'm not very good at it yet, so just bear with me for another week or so while I sort that out. Um, yeah, so a couple of things. First of all, uh, channel news. Um, this is going to be up on Thursday, I hope, at some point, and that would be Thursday the 25th of April. Nope, March. <laughs> oh my god, it's been a really long week. Um, yeah, so starting next week, I will be having my uh, tutorial videos, our so longs, on Tuesdays. And then I will have a Friday Sews video for you guys on Fridays. And that way it'll just be broken up a little bit. It'll be a little easier for me to get them um, uh, recorded when they're not one right after the other. It'll also be a little more fun for you guys to have things broken up so you don't get like bored with me in like, a big batch. Um, no Friday Sews video this week, however, and that's just because I, I literally just got my computer yesterday and I'm still trying to figure out how to work it, so I, I just don't have time. Uh, but I do have a ton of other stuff to talk to you about, um, and I, we will do all of that a week from tomorrow in our next Friday Sews video. The other reason that I can't do it today is because we are sewing the river tunic today. Uh, Diane Erickson river tunic, which I promised for you last week. Um, we're finally going to get to this today, and my tutorial's a little bit long, um, so I, I just don't want to add more to it than I need to. So, let's just get down to it. First and foremost, this is our pattern, obviously the download version. Um, you can get a 15% uh, discount on this pattern at dianeerickson.com. I will leave links to this below, and the coupon code is the River T R I V E R T, all caps, all no spaces. I will put that down below in the information box as well, so you guys have it handy. That is for 15% off um, either the print or the download version of the River Tunic pattern from Diane Erickson. That was, I believe, set to expire. That coupon code was set to expire April 1st. But um, the lovely Laura over at um, Diane Erickson extended that for us to April 8th due to my computer snafu. So, thanks, Laura. Um, okay, so what do we have to say about this? This, did I say it right? It's one of my favorite patterns. I know I say that a lot, but I got to tell you guys, this is another just really super genius pattern. It doesn't take a lot of fabric. It doesn't um, waste a lot of fabric. It is easy to sew. I mean, there's almost nothing to it in terms of sewing. Mostly everything is the fun part, which is finishing and um, decorating and augmenting and whatever else you want to do to it because the shape is really simple. That, however, does not mean that it's not also really elegant. I'm going to show you a picture of the one I'm wearing today right here. Um, I just feel like this is one of those those patterns you can do, I know I just said this, a gazillion things with. Like like a lot of Diane's patterns, actually. I'm also going to put a picture up here of the first one that I made. This was really just like a sample that I made, like a tester that I made in some leftover linen. But I have to tell you that I really love it. The one I'm making today in the tutorial is also in linen. This is a um, like a shirt weight Italian linen that I got from my, my local fabric store Haberman's and you'll probably recognize the trim which is my um, Diamond Tactile Isles cotton from Rusty Crow and I will link those shops for you down below as well. Um, this pattern Diane says that she originally made this pattern to use up scarves and I can see why this would be really easy like cool top to make with out of a couple of big scarves. It would also be really cool to make this in um, another sheer fabric, a Georgette or a chiffon as a, like an overlayer for an evening piece or a daytime piece depending on how fancy you are. Um, 
a crepe de chine, any like lightweight, sort of almost semi-sheer silk would be beautiful. Um, obviously, linen would be great. Uh, but I could also see this in a heavier fabric, not, not um, stiffer fabric, but a heavier fabric, like a crepe, um, a rayon crepe, a silk crepe. I mean, what wouldn't be great in a silk crepe, right? Um, a rayon chalet could be really cool and this just like for a breezy summer top you could throw this on over a pair of leggings with a pair of sandals over a pair of baggy pants with a pair of sandals and a rayon chalet it would be awesome so okay so enough about the fabric a good deal of this pattern is uh, Diane's ideas on how to augment and alter this pattern to do to look different um, not just to change the size and stuff, but to actually change, um, uh, to give it a little more interest because it is a really simple pattern. Um, I don't know that I have anything else to say about that, except that, that because of that, like with all Diane Erickson patterns, in my opinion, it's well worth the purchase price, um, for the ideas you get along with the pattern. Um, okay, so that is that. I am going to go to the um, tutorial really quickly here and get into it. Um, this this pattern has a big, has four square, four squares, has four corners. It's like a square hem. And on a square hem, I particularly like a mitered hem. So in the tutorial, I show you two versions of a mitered hem. One is a really simple one. One is the face hem that you see that you saw in the picture of the one I'm wearing today. Now, one last thing before we go. I did get this little book called Mastering Miters by Linda Lee. I picked this up at um, the sewingworkshop.com uh, a, a week ago, maybe. And I just want to say, I think it was 11 or $12. It's not a big book, obviously. It's just like a little pamphlet. Really, like with all of Linda Lee's stuff, very good directions. Um... Lots of really good ideas for, uh, good instructions for doing miters in here. And if you don't know what exactly what I'm talking about, you'll see in the tutorial here, the two versions that I do in this tutorial are not in here, but I just wanted to tell you guys, if, if you happen to be over there, um, you should take a look at this and see if you don't want to add that to your library because it's a really, really good um, thing, thing to have. Uh, yeah, she answered some questions in this little pamphlet that I've had for like 20 years. So, see if you don't need that. Okay, now, let's go over to the tutorial before I yammer on Okay, forever. I think I figured it out so I can get the whole pattern in here. Here we have our um, river tunic, and it looks just like this. I have gone ahead and cut my pocket piece out. You don't have to cut this piece out, you could just trace it. But just for ease of showing you guys, I got rid of that. Um, a couple of other things I did are here at the neckline, I dropped my neckline down here two inches. This is the original, the red is the original, and this black one is the one I made. And I just dropped that two inches and I curved it up to the shoulder line. Now I'm going to use this red line, the original red line for my back neck and this one for my front. The other thing is you can place this on... <clears throat> You can place this on a cut edge and sew your shoulder seam here. That's no problem. In fact, that's what they tell you in the um, directions. However, that does make your neckline shorter and it's going to make your um, sleeve shorter, which is also fine because you may want it to be shorter. For this one, I have folded my fabric in half lengthwise and widthwise. So I have a fold here and a fold here. So when I put this down, my center front will be on a fold and my shoulder will be on a fold. So I won't have a seam line here, but just know that you can put one there. If you don't have fabric, you can fold over or if you just want to do that. You may want to do a different sleeve option, in which case you might want to seam there. Okay, so the other thing I did is this piece here that we cut out, we're going to use for our pocket. And it's going to go in here in this side seam. Um, I made two little marks here they're eight inches apart and I'm gonna make those notches when I cut this out I'm gonna notch my fabric there and that's just so 
I can um, more easily place my pocket when we get to that point. But I recommend putting notches there or some sort of mark so you know where you want to put your pocket. Okay, so this is our main pattern piece cut out. So this is a piece that we cut out of here for our pockets. And it needs to fit in here. Those are my two notches right there. And obviously that is not going to fit. So I have all four pieces of my pocket here. I'm going to move this out of the way. These are all four stacked together. We want this to be eight inches wide. Let's make sure they're nice and even. Eight inches is right here. We're just going to put a little mark at eight inches. Like that. And then I'm going to fold this edge over. Just like that. And I'm going to trim this off. So it matches that, more or less. Not gonna be exact, and it doesn't have to be. Okay, so that's our new pocket. So now before we go any further, we need to finish all the edges on our pocket, and we're gonna finish this seam right here, just from the underarm around this curve over here. Just be careful that you don't, like if you're surging, make sure you don't surge off your notches for your pocket. Now, to put our pockets on, this is the right side of my fabric, and my notches are right here. I marked them with a pin, so hopefully you can see them a little better. We're gonna put these, we're just gonna put one pocket piece down, and we're gonna place it right between those notches. It should fit pretty closely. And we're gonna sew those down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, just from here to here. And you're gonna do that on all four pieces. So you should have one pocket on each front and one pocket on each back. I've now sewn all my pocket pieces on and I've pressed all the pocket pieces out so that the seam allowances are facing the pocket. That's the wrong okay, side. Okay, so once we have this right sides together, we're gonna to stitch this together and we're just gonna start at the underarm and we're gonna use a half an inch seam allowance. We're gonna go around here to the top of the pocket and we're gonna pivot, go around the pocket edge, pivot again, and go down to this side and back stitch. And we're gonna do that on both sides. So this sides. is our dress, our tunic sewn together. I pressed my side seams open, and I pressed my pockets towards the front. Here on the side where your pockets are, if you just give a little clip to this, to the back side of your seam allowance, then you can press those open and let your pocket fold to the front. I hope you can see that. Here, let me fold this out like this. That's the side seam. And you can see how I pressed that open and just clipped it right there, just the seam allowance, so your pocket can lay to the front. Okay, now on mine, my neckline is still a little big and I'm guessing that's because I cut it down. Um, so I am gonna put a little, this is the center back of mine, right here. And I'm just gonna put a little pleat in here of about an inch. I'm gonna sew it right here. And I'm gonna sew it down maybe three inches. So I'm gonna sew from here to here. And then I'm gonna open that up and make it more of a box pleat. But if you find that your neckline is too wide, you can do that or you can put some pleats in the front. Just try it on and see where you like them. You can fold this, just fold it over anywhere you like and make your pleats, but do this while it's on so you can see Now how we're it gonna looks. bind this neck edge eventually, um, but I'm gonna put some pleats in mine first and then I'm gonna bind it, but you can see, this is my original one, if I can get it out here, and you can see how I bound this one and then pleated the front neckline, so it's a little uneven in spots, and I did that intentionally, but you can see how I just sort of placed my um, pleats evenly to pull that neck in a little bit. So I'm going to go do that with mine, and then we will come back, I'm going to go put my pleats in and I'm going to bind my neck, and then we'll come back and deal with our sleeves. And our Okay, pants. here is our river tunic so far and I've gone ahead and put my binding on here and missed a teeny bit there. Get that off. 
So um, you can see I put two pleats in the front. These were three quarters of an inch wide each, so an inch and a half on each side. And I made them nine inches long. And I measured them from the center front so that they're even out this way. You can put pleats anywhere you want on now, this. Now, next we have to deal with our hem. And you can just hem this uh, any way you would normally hem it. But for this one, I think what would be nice is a mitered hem. I'm actually going to use a um, some more of this wide bias tape and put a mitered facing on the front of mine. But just so you can see how to make a really nice mitered hem, what you would do is, whoops, all backwards here. So if this is the right side of our fabric, and you can see, um, I hope you can see, I've folded my hemline in so it's an inch on this side this is the bottom hem and this is the side hem so the piece that goes up and around and I press those both under one inch so it would be it'll be like that when it's finished now with those edges pressed you're gonna turn it you're gonna pull these out to the right side okay so you fold it like this to the front and this one to the front and then right here, where these two intersect, right here in this corner, I'm going to make a mark on each hem. So once right here, and then once right here. I hope that's clear. Now we're going to open that out. Whoops. Got it on my tunic. I'm going to open it up. We're going to fold this right sides together like this so your hems are matching up and you're gonna see that those little notches should really match up right there now you're gonna sew from this point the point of your fold you're gonna sew a straight line from that point to the edge of the fabric where that where your chalk marks are just like that. You're going to sew it like that. Now that you have this sewn, you're going to trim off this little tail here and you're just going to flip this over to the right side. And mine's not going to lay flat because I'm not trimming that off right now. But And the wrong side, the inside is going to look like this and the outside is going to look like this. And then you're just going to edge stitch all the way around. You're going to do this on all four corners and you're going to edge stitch your hem all the way around it. And obviously you're going to want to finish the raw edges any okay, way you'd to like. Do, um, a faced hem with mitered corners. I'm going to show you on this little mini. This is a, obviously a miniature version of our river tunic. It's sewn together under the arms. We need four strips of fabric to do the hem. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to open this out like this so it looks almost like a square. You need two strips of fabric that go along here, one here, one here, and then these sides are going to be a different length so measure those and see what those are going to be. So you want two strips for those sides and they go all the way to the ends on all four corners like that. You can see I marked mine short, short, long, long. I used a Sharpie so you guys could see it, <clears throat> but obviously mark it with pins or chalk or whatever you need to. Just so you remember that you have two short sides and two long sides. Then um, also this is the length. They need to be the length of the sides. On my tunic, I made mine three inches wide and I used a half an inch seam allowance. So I have a half an inch seam allowance on this edge, half an inch seam allowance on this edge. That will make the border two inches, but you can make that as wide as you want it to be or as narrow as you want it to be. This is obviously not to scale. Okay, so you have your four strips. We're gonna get rid of those. We're not really gonna get rid of them. Okay, so then we're gonna take one, we're gonna put it right side up, and we're gonna take a short strip and put it right side down. So they're right sides together, just like that. 
Now, we want this corner to be a 45 degree angle. And the easiest way to figure that out is to take this short edge and lay it against this edge, like this. I'm just going to do it on the top layer. We just need to use this for marking, like this. And we're just going to finger press it so I can see. Now when I open that up, I can see there's a little line right there. I'm going to mark it for you guys. Like that. That is going to be our stitching line. So we're going to stitch this right here. Then we're going to open this out. It'll look like this. And we're going to go to this side. Now, this is a short side, so we need another long side here. This is the right side. We're putting right sides down. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to open that out. So it looks like that. Okay, we're going to do it one more time. That's our long edge. This is our short one. This time it's going to be on this side. I'm going to fold this down to get our line. Okay, now you have this. And for our fourth side, we want to sew these two together. So just flip it over like this. So they're right sides together. And do the same thing. So now we should have something that looks like a big square, like that. Maybe it's easier to see it like that. Okay, now we're just going to go to our sewing machine and we're going to sew all four of those corners just along the lines that we okay, drew. Okay, so here we have our border square. And on the wrong side, we're going to go to each of these corners and trim off this excess. We're going to press each one of those seams open. Like that. And then we want to fold this um, inner edge under by whatever our seam allowance is. So you're going to need to go in to each of these seams and just clip it, just clip those threads a little bit at each of those seams. So you can fold this under by your seam allowance on all four sides and press it down. Don't stitch it, just press it down all the way around. Okay, now I have sewn this all the way around the perimeter. This is the wrong side of my dress and I placed the right side of my facing onto the wrong side of my dress and I've sewn all the way around the edges. Then you're going to trip your corners, or sorry, trim your corners. Um, and your seam allowances. Now you're probably going to want to understitch this, so press your seam allowances towards your dress and understitch on the dress side right here because we're going to flip this over to the right side of our dress like this and the facing is going to be showing. So it'll look something like this. Now, once you've got all of that done, your understitching is done, all of your seams are pressed, you're just going to edge stitch all the way around this top folded edge, all the way around your dress. Be sure you don't catch your actual dress part in there. You just want it to sit like this. And then, when you're done, it should look something like that with a really cool border all the way around the edge. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is um, hem our sleeves. You can obviously just hem these, just fold it under a half an inch and another half an inch or a quarter of an inch and another quarter of an inch if you want. You could put a binding on here if you want. I want to put a facing on mine because when it's finished, I want to roll this up like that. And I want my um, stripey fabric for that. So. The way I'm going to do that, this sleeve actually gets a little narrower. So to make sure my facing is going to fit in to my sleeve, I cut four inch strips 
Um, that will give me a half an inch on this side and a half an inch on this side for seam allowance. That means when I'm cutting it, it's really going to lay at three inches. So I'm going to lay my shirt down here. I'm going to actually do it this way. Lay my shirt, lay my fabric down like this. And I'm going to lay this an inch in from the edge like that. That is going to give me the shape that I need when it folds over to the right side. So I'm just going to fold this like this, make sure it's even, and I'm going to give myself a half an inch seam allowance. So I am going to use my chalk and my ruler. Let's move this down so you guys can see. It would have been better to do it on this end, but oh well. I'm just going to lay this right along my sleeve, the top edge of my sleeve, and I'm giving myself a half an inch seam allowance right there. All right. That looks like it'll fit in nicely. Now I'm just going to cut that right there. And I'm going to cut the other strip for the other sleeve exactly the same way. I'm just going to use this as a pattern. So now I'm going to sew this with a half an inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew it to the right side of my dress, fold it to the inside, and then I'm just going to fold the top edge under and um, stitch it down, top stitch it down like we did on the hem. So this is what we have so far and she's pretty much finished. Now we can just leave her as is, which is fine. Um, or we can play with some of this volume in the middle if we want. And I really like the idea of doing a little asymmetric pleat to one side, something like that, or something like that. Um, I haven't really decided what I want to do, but here's some ideas. We can just push it to the side and put a pin here, which would actually be really cool. Or we can do... A little I was thinking about doing stitching that together there and that together there and then putting a little buttonhole in each piece and just buttoning it down to the side like that and that is probably what I'm gonna do but just so you know you have a million things you can do here you could also put buttonholes here and a tie and tie it together. That could be very cool. Um, you could put pleats in if you wanted, like towards the inside and do a little more pleating like that. I don't know. I think I'm going to do this like this. that and like that. I'm going to try it on and make sure that that fits and I'm just going to put buttonholes in each of those pleats right there. I hope you can even see that. Not the closer. I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put a buttonhole in that pleat and in that pleat and then buttons on this center part right here and then button those down so it looks like that. Um, but there you go. I'm also going to put a little, um, I think I said this before, I have some uh, top stitching right here where I put my original pleats and I'm going to do some red embroidery detailing in there. Alright guys, so there's our first version of our river tunic. Um, I, I love this dress. <laughs> I know you guys probably are tired of hearing me say, I love this dress. I do. I really love this dress. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more pictures here. One of them is, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of this with my Capitola pants and my uh, French fold shrug. Both of those are in the diamond textiles that I got from Rusty Crow. And um, I really love this whole thing together, even though I, I didn't intend for it to be that way. In fact, 
I didn't realize that was, I would like it so much together until this morning when I was trying to find something to wear with my river tunic and I was like oh yeah I have those pants and I was running around the house and I was like oh wait what about that I could just throw the shrug on too so yeah I mean I, I really love the whole thing um let's see what else did I have to say oh yeah so speaking of which if you are just seeing this and you have not yet checked out the um, French Fold Shrug videos that I did like a couple of weeks ago, I'll link those for you below. It's another pattern you're definitely going to want to check out. Um, mm -mm -mm. I think that's it, you guys. I'm looking at my notes, making sure I don't forget anything. Always forget something. Um, coupon code River T, R I V E R T, all caps, no spaces, at dianeerickson.com. That gets you 15% off either the print or the download version. Please go check that out. And while you're there, check out all of her other patterns because really one of my favorite pattern designers. I just think she's awesome. Um, okay, I think that is it. As I said before, unfortunately, we will not have a Friday Zoes video for you tomorrow, but we'll see you in just a few days when we do River Tunic version two. But that one is going to be in a knit. And I'm going to have some really fun, I hope. <laughs> I, I saw some really cool ideas from Diane Erickson's website. And I hope they turn out as cool for me as they did for her. And I look forward to seeing you guys next Tuesday. Um, please hit like and subscribe. And I will see you then. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.